working on the dust carts. That was Nick Beggs, the bass player of Kajigugu, a group being launched this month by EMI Records. And this is EMI House, headquarters of EMI in London. In the 60s, this company made millions off of record royalties from the Beatles. But after the Beatles broke up, they've had to search for new talent. They found some successfully, Queen, Kate Bush, Sheena Easton, and recently with groups that combine music and fashion, people like Duran Duran and Talk Talk. Now they've decided that Kajigugu are going to be their group for 1983. But just throwing a lot of money at a group doesn't guarantee success, as Virgin's recent expenditure on the record Thank You by the Pale Fountains has proved that record didn't make it. A lot of time, effort, and risk go into trying to make Kajigugu the group of 83. Did you choose to go with the MI, or did they come to you and give you your only offer? Um... We did have other record companies interested, but uh, EMI were very quick, very snappy, and jumped right in there, you know. You had the interest of a couple of record companies. Why did you want to go to EMI? Well, difficult, but... Um, we met this guy there called Terry Slater, who's head of A&R, and he spent two and a half hours with us. And, and in fact, since we've joined EMI, I know that two and a half hours of Terry Slater's time is like gold, you know. He's, he's so busy, he's got millions of things to do, and he, he really made an effort, and, and uh, he obviously impressed us. I was, uh, basically, I was very impressed. We've heard why Kajigugu wanted to sign with EMI Records, but why did the company want the group? We asked the executive trio of Terry Slater, Dave Ambrose, and David Hughes. First, creative director, Terry Slater. Dynamite. Great songs. And um, visually, absolutely superb. And bearing in mind, um, for me, the bottom line in, in our music today is hit songs. You have to have that. But also, at this moment in time, fashion is very important, too. And there I was looking at both the ingredients, which I feel are needed at this moment in time for success. And they had it. 100%. <laughs> Glossy nice, reveal the facts with a little bit of goo. It's usually in the who's who place. Your bets protect the favorite party of the day. You'll find it in the who's who, who's there. You'll find them in the who's who. To be a jet setter, be a head start. Lyrically, it's Limal and myself. 
you haven't had any arguments about I want to write this verse or these words are mine. No, on the contrary, we, you know, Nick came to me, for example, with Too Shy. Nick wrote the um, the hook for the chorus, which was Too Shy, Shy, Hush, Hush, I, Too I, and he did a verse. And he said, he came to me and said, Lamal, I can't find anything else. Can you, you know, see what you can do with it? And I actually wrote the first verse, and Nick wrote the second. Well, you could have released Too Shy, their first single, before Christmas. Instead, you've chosen to wait for That's January. Right. In Why fact, that? Uh, at one point, I was under some pressure to do so from certain people, notably from the band. And you can understand, having put all their energies into making this record, they wanted, quite naturally, to see it out quickly. My attitude was that Kajagoogoo, as a band, were unknown. Not only unknown outside of this building, but they were, by and large, they were unknown within EMI. And so I felt that if this is a very, very good single, the first single. The law of averages says if you launch a new single by a new band of whom nobody has ever heard, I mean, with 140 records out every week, you stand a, a very large chance of losing it. And that effort will then be wasted. I want to make sure that that effort isn't wasted. We, we've never had any experience in marketing a product before, so we do have to let them do their bit, you know. Uh, it's, it is the company, they have taken us under their wing and they will help us out. We always hope to be successful with everything we take on. But with Duran Duran and Talk Talk, those two particular bands, we took on for reasons that they, you know, they were great talents and had great futures. And we believe that as a company. And uh, the marriage comes together and then we do all the things we have to do, that what the group has to do and what we have to do as a company. And you've seen the results with Duran Duran, enormous, Talk Talk, same thing. Now Kajuga will take the same path. So before this single is released, there will have been a lot of time and whatever it is, amount of money already expended. That's right. That's right. By the time the first Kajigugu single, Too Shy, is released next week, EMI will already have invested a five-figure sum in the group. Much of that on the production of a video of the single. Videos are considered necessary these days in the promotion of single releases. We were present when the director of the film, Simon Milne, was discussing his plans with Kajigugu. Yeah, I was just interested about this at the beginning. How did you actually envisage the band? You know, would we look like we do normally with this piece at the beginning? What here? Yes, I mean, the, the idea was that the band and her should never change throughout. Yeah. Uh, your costumes remain the same because we want you to look the same. Uh, it's the first time Kajigugu have been seen. It's important that you look the same. But I mean, I just thought it'd be nice to start with you packing up rather than with you starting playing, to actually the instruments being put away and this guy paying you off as if, you know, it's like a tenor each, it's a little cheap place that you've played in and yeah. he's paying you off. And then as he's leaving, it's like suddenly it goes, do do do. When the music starts after those first two fade ups, you then actually want to get back into playing. It's like he's gone, it's a well, chance for you to actually do the song. You. The guy who's paying you, I don't know the club, pays you and rather than leave, you take the incentive to actually do the song because he's not there and she actually witnesses you playing the song but then she puts her own kind of right, foreground so into it. At this point, so at this point there's, uh, there no, there's nobody except her in the... In the no, I mean, there are a few band. people leaving. It looks like they're doing the twist here, but they're actually leaving. Right. So there are a few kind of guys going with their girls. As he walks out, there, he's, there are a few people grabbing their girls, and the tables are emptying. And that's when she's come back in. Like, the guy who leaves, he's the last cloak to go, so she gives him his coat, and she just comes back in. Will you go gaga or say ta-ta to Kajigugu?